Hello everybody. Our topic for today in skin pathology is about dermatitis. And as the name implies, it is about inflammatory conditions of the skin. This is our second lecture of four lectures about skin pathology. The presentation outlines of this talk will be the intended learning outcomes, the classification of skin diseases in general, the acute dermatosis, the chronic dermatosis, and you find at the end the quiz section and further learning resources. The intended learning outcome of this session by the end of this lecture we should be able to classify the diseases of the skin, describe the acute dermatosis, describe the chronic dermatosis. So the basic classification of skin diseases is as follows. We have acute dermatosis. These include articaria, eczematous dermatitis and erythema multiforme. The second type of diseases is our chronic dermatosis. The major chronic dermatosis are psoriasis, lichen planus and lichen simplex chronicus. The third type of skin diseases include infectious dermatosis and infestations and these are bacterial, fungal, viral, insects, arachnoids and so on. The fourth type of skin disorders are bullous or blistering diseases. They include pemphigus, bullous pemphigoid, dermatitis herbitiformis and others. The last category of skin diseases include tumors and tumor-like conditions. They are mainly benign, pre-malignant and malignant skin disorders. So in this lecture our talk will be about the first two uh, points acute dermatosis and chronic dermatosis. Dermatosis inflammatory skin diseases are called dermatosis singular dermatitis or another name eczema. The etiology of dermatosis is mostly unknown it is idiopathic nobody knows what is the exact cause of inflammatory uh, condition however there are genetic and environmental factors contributing to dermatosis genetic and environmental such as drugs and chemicals sun exposure and allergies to many things including pollens, food, uh, many are contact dermatitis due to contact with many things. The diagnosis of inflammatory skin diseases requires seeing the patient. Therefore in our first lecture we talked about terminology. The type of the lesion is very important as well as the history because the picture is uh, so uh, there is mix up in the picture of the dermatosis you cannot say what type unless you have a full clinical picture the acute and chronic often refer to clinical cause not to type of the cells that is to say uh, the type of cells does not indicate whether it is acute or chronic for example neutrophils or mono cytic infiltrations does not necessarily mean the type of acute or chronic. 
So when the inflammatory condition persists for days to weeks, it can be labeled as acute dermatosis. And when the condition persists for weeks to months and years, this could be called chronic dermatosis. So the, the acute dermatosis include urticaria, or the common name hives, eczema, or atopic eczema, another name, erythema multiforme. These are the most common acute dermatosis, urticaria, eczema, erythema multiforme. The chronic dermatosis include psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, lichen planus, lichen simplex chronicus. However, this is a simplified type of classification of dermatosis. Otherwise, there are hundreds or thousands of names given to dermatosis, some of them based on histo histological features, some of them based on clinical or the causative agents. However, these are the most common dermatosis. In the acute dermatosis, you have articaria, eczema, and eczema multiforme, and in the chronic type of dermatosis, you have the psoriasis and seborrheic dermatitis, like in planus and the like in simplex chronicus. I would like you to concentrate on those bold ones in the acute. We have the eczema is the most important one, and in the chronic type of dermatosis, you, you have to know psoriasis. This is the most important one. Articaria is some sort of a dermal edema due to dilatation of vascular spaces early perivascular cuffing of inflammatory cells. So in articaria, you find hives or wheels. It is due to type 1 hypersensitivity reaction triggered off by the perivascular muscle releasing histamine. So it is a sort of type 1 hypersensitivity with degranulation of muscles induced by IgE and the antigen or allergens. This is a sort of uh, articaria, you find these reddish areas after exposure to certain antigen or allergen. You find these sometimes will be itchy, sometimes with associated with mild pain, and definitely there is edema, dermal edema. When you see in the microscope, you find this dermal edema. This is the dermal edema, and there are inflammatory cells as you can see in articaria few inflammatory cells there are not too many because the dermal edema is marked the second type of acute dermatosis is eczema another name is acute eczematous dermatitis acute eczematous dermatitis there are a myriad of acute inflammatory disorders there are too many myriad of acute inflammatory disorders with allergic drug related sun related etiology so we have a lot of types of eczema. The common histologic feature in eczema is spongiosis. Spongiosis means edema in the epidermis. Therefore, eczema is also known as spongiotic dermatitis. Spongiotic dermatitis due to spongiosis of the edema. It is a microscopic uh, descriptive uh, term. So this is the eczema. You can see many changes in eczema, including redness in certain areas. There may be blisters in certain areas, and there may be some sort of scales or or plaques or flaking. This is the, the uh, eczema. Eczema, you find yellow or white scaly patches that flake off. The affected areas may be red, as we have seen in the previous picture, itchy, greasy, or oily. The higher loss may occur in the area with the, with the rash. So you can see the uh, in this uh, hand, eczema, you can see the roughening or the scales and the plaques. And this is the, due to itching, you find the area is lignified or or there may be flex or flex. This is another uh,
photograph for the atopic eczema. You find redness, you find maybe vesicles or flakes. Okay. The microscopic picture, the hallmark is the intercellular edema of the of the epidermis. You find too many cells displaying edema in the epidermal cells. So this is spongiosis, therefore it is called, so also called spongiotic dermatitis. The edema may form, may induce or predispose to infections, therefore forming pustules can be thought of as extreme spongiosis when there are too many pustules in dermatitis. These are other forms of eczema or atopic eczema. You find pustules, you find sometimes ulcerations as in this one or execorations. The vesicles and the bully have an evolution of clinical and histologic appearances generally following the acute and chronic inflammatory evolution therefore you find them at different stages of maturation some of them are newly growing and small and some are of them are old and they are almost uh, fading the third type of acute dermatosis is the erythema multiforme erythema multiforme is a skin condition of unknown cause may be due to hypersensitivity response to infections and drugs. It is an uncommon self-limiting disorder with peak incidence in the second and third decades of life. In young individuals, it, uh, it occurs and then it uh, goes away, maybe without even treatment. So it is a self-limiting disorder. A severe form of erythema multiforme is known as Stevens-Johnson syndrome associated with many conditions including some medications. This is erythema multiforme and as the name implies erythema means red or reddened. In fair skin it appears as red areas and multiforme means uh, different stages of skin lesions you can see small ones large ones you may see just discoloration such as uh, uh, patches or you can see macules just as macules or you can see large vesicles so it, it is known as erythema multiforme redness with multiple types of uh, skin lesions now we come to the chronic dermatosis the most important one is psoriasis psoriasis is uh, a bit little more common disease more than others it affects about one to two percent of people in the usa for example and characterized by the presence of scales that mainly occur in the elbows knees scalp and the lower back however every every part of the body may be affected by by psoriasis but these are the most common sites for the the scales, the elbows, the knees, the scalp, and the lower back. Psoriasis may be asymptomatic without symptoms, just there are these scales, or it might be itchy and very annoying. So this is a fit, fit picture of uh, psoriasis around the elbow joint, as we indicated. It is one of the most common sites for psoriasis, the elbows, the knees, the scalp, and the lower back. The microscopic features of psoriasis include parakeratosis. And as we mentioned, parakeratosis indicates the presence of nuclei in the upper epidermal uh, keratinocytes. Generalized epidermal hyperplasia, hyperplasia that we once mentioned or called it acanthosis so there is generalized epidermal hyperplasia there is elongation of the reed pecs or the reed ridges and there are there are extensive chronic inflammatory cells 
in the case of psoriasis. In addition to the presence of abscesses that are known as Monroe, Monroe abscess or Monroe intraepidermal micro abscess. So are the, these are the microscopic features of psoriasis. This is the classical psoriasis picture under the microscope. You can see the parakeratosis that we mentioned are the, is the presence of the nuclei within the superficial keratinocytes that should not be there. They should be enucleated, but we find them hyperplasia. You can see this is the hyperplasia of the epidermis that we call acanthosis. And the elongated reed pages, elongated reed pages, and there are um, chronic inflammatory cells in between and there are these micro abscesses of Monroe small abscesses as you can see here known as Monroe micro abscesses the another uh, common type of chronic dermatitis is stasis dermatitis and as the name implies stasis dermatitis is the commonest in the areas of the tissues often most compromised by atherosclerosis they are most common in the lower limbs in the legs you find stasis dermatitis particularly in those who have vascular problems this is a feature of clinical feature of stasis dermatitis you find discoloration you may find ulcerations and you find this discoloration macules and patches all these are features of stasis dermatitis may be may ulcerate so it is a common form of dermatitis and usually in the elderly these are the flakes and the scales dermatitis so in summary of acute uh, of inflammatory dermatosis there are many specific inflama inflammatory dermatosis what we mentioned was, were examples of dermatosis. Uh, they may be mediated by immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin E, such as in Articaria. We say the mast cells and the degranulation, releasing of histamine. So this is type 1 hypersensitivity, or we, known as Articaria, induced by many things, food, pollens, allergens, and a lot of things. Another type of uh, uh, mechanism, the antigen-specific T cells. Antigen-specific T cells are seen in cases of eczema, erythema multiforme, and psoriasis. And another type of dermatosis is induced by trauma, such as lichen simplex chronicus that we didn't pay attention to or we didn't mention in our talk. That is the end of this lecture, and now you come to the quiz section where you can uh, enforce your knowledge. Name for histologic findings in case of psoriasis. What do you see in psoriasis? In these pictures, you can say what you want to say after reading or revising this lecture many times. You can tell the answer. In quiz number two, a 25 year old male complains of sudden onset of each raise wheels that occur after exposure to farm plants. They are red warm and mildly painful to touch as, as seen in the photograph below. So what is your diagnosis for this condition? What type of hypersensitivity is this? And what is the chemical mediator of the change? And you find the answers when you revise the lecture history the itch plagues on hands of a patient who also complains of asthma he has also respiratory hypersensitivity so what is your diagnosis of this disorder you can find the answer quiz number four what is the diagnosis in this condition you can see scales redness or discolorations what do, how do you diagnose this disorder okay you can find further references and further readings and thank you very much.